Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a 15 minute session for a client. I'm gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing, specifically in support of sciatica. <laughs> I'm gonna read the client goals here in just a moment. I wanna say a big thank you to the client. Thank you so very much for the opportunity to help you with this. I've also experienced sciatica. I did not enjoy that. I had to go to a chiropractor and slowly but surely work it out. And I can't imagine having to endure it for longer periods of time and on and off, even over the course of years. So I'm giving you a really big hug. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to support you and for us to look at it together and for sharing with us here on YouTube. So I'm going to read your goals now. So you say this, I've been dealing with reoccurring sciatica for some years now. I've gone through the physical human -y doctor process, but I'm curious what the sound of this sounds or looks like energetically, and if there's any healing that could be done. I like how you wrote that. So sciatica as a sound, and what it sounds like, what it looks like energetically, if there's any healing that could be done. You also sent me a picture, and the picture, it's perfect. Um, it talks about, you know, where sciatica is located and just a little bit of detail. So it says pain radiating along the sciatic nerve, which runs down one or both legs from the lower back. That's what sciatica is. And it's usually caused when a herniated disc or bone spur in the spine presses on the nerve. So. Hmm. All right, shall we get started? Shall we see what this looks like on the energy side of things? See what it sounds like and looks like? See if we can do some healing for it? I guarantee we can move energy and we can make some something feel better about this. See what it's saying to you. Perhaps it's saying something. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna relax and get the zone here. Okay. Okay, well, right off the bat, I, okay. I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to explain what I just experienced. Um, basically, I am a human body and there is this, um, it's like a magical wand like Harry Potter would have, but it's not necessarily to a tip. Um, it's a little bit thicker at the end and then that punctures through my nose like I'm getting my nose pierced or something, but a huge hole is in my nose here. And then this is literally sticking out on both sides. That just totally happened. It just went like this. And I'm just in this dark, um, I don't know, black sand environment. So I really don't know what any of this means yet. What does this have to do with sciatica? What is this saying? Okay, well, I remove this. And then I actually look at this object here. I actually put it in your hands and then I have you look at this object here. There's something interesting about um, a mother and a child representation. I feel like I'm a mother and your child here and I'm, I'm showing you that we need to look at this together. And so my hands are on your hands as we both in a way are holding the object. Something in my heart is encouraging you to let this go. But something also says sometimes in order to let it go, we need to have some kind of conscious clarity. We have to decide something in our minds about it. And once we have that decision made, then we can let it go. But the longer we look at it without a whole lot of thought, Whole lot of explanation it starts to turn into a liquid and once it turns into a liquid it starts to drip 
And I feel that that is impacting the back of my neck here. <sighs> uh, something is coming to me. Um, and, okay, there's another sense that, okay, your spine looks like the neck of a dragon. And uh, it just keeps showing me a dragon and then it shows me the neck of the dragon is long and then it has i don't know it shows me internal components of a neck of a dragon i don't even know if that's what it would look like but so it shows me and then it shows me the neck of the dragon is like your spine <laughs> and it looks similar okay it looks like it has vertebrae in there and then i see another kind of like a harry potter one but it's not a, to a point a sharp point it's just like a rod and then I see it jammed into the the neck of the dragon and it goes all the way from this what is the human neck and it goes all the way down into what is the hips area it just goes all the way down almost like the human from the neck all the way down to our or maybe the whole spine even is just the neck of a dragon but this is just jammed down there and there's something of a, a psychology of a, a reconciliation something that has to be let go of still very vague right what do you need to let go of i'd like to know so you and i i actually i'm a mother and you're my child and i hold your hand you're maybe five years old and we see a picture of you and it it's like a a picture of like a polaroid picture of you but it's also an x-ray picture of you and they're uh overlapping each other and it's just like your back, okay? And we're just holding hands just blankly, silently staring at this picture, okay? And I tell you that you have to be the one to do it. You have to be the one to let this go. And something is very sad inside of you and it's sad in your heart. And I see your heart becomes an egg that's cracked and then the yolk comes out. The yolk doesn't necessarily fall into a frying pan, it just falls. It's more, more like fell on the kitchen floor. But we can't put the yolk back in the egg and we can't seal the egg and make it like it once was. Everything's different now. Everything's different now. And there's something very sad and you can't mend something in your heart. I want to say this rod feels like a responsibility, but because there's so much heart connection with it, it's hard to understand, is it a practical responsibility or is it something maybe your heart has felt as though you had a responsibility that you can't fulfill or you can't mend and whatever your participation was or was not, it seems like out of your hands anyway. Yeah, because your heart feels unfulfilled, like it feels uh, like the yolk that fell out of the cracked egg, it, it's over now. It's just over now. And this is going to be quite painful. As I show you, we're going to pull the rod out of the neck of the dragon. And it's it literally is like pulling a very bone out of your freaking leg. It's not nice. It's like pull out bone from living leg it just seems so morbid you know but this rod doesn't belong there and it just shows me like harry potter one okay but it's like a thick long rod metallic and it's rounded it's not it's got jagged edges or anything i tell you to feel the pain and don't resist it because then you will know it is real. Okay, this is, um, I actually take my hand and from the top of the human neck, of the dragon neck, okay, of your spine, I take this and I start pulling it out and it's like this horrible sensation, okay? And I, I don't, I'm not asked to rip it out. I'm not asked to yank, okay? I'm asked to just slowly pull it out, like slowly ripping off a band-aid. It seems quite cruel, but there's something important here in allowing it to be felt from beginning to end because it wasn't ignored. We weren't trying to avoid it. We weren't just uh, get it over with. 
actually worked through it from beginning to end and we understood the pain of it. And the pain was what made us feel like we understood the thing that we need to understand in order to let it go. It doesn't seem to have a logical viewpoint. It seems to have more of a an emotional standing, a, pain, a standing of, of what is pain. Is pain a logical thought? Is it an emotional stance or is it this is like this, this agony experience, this pulsating agony cringe experience, right? So it seems not like an emotional thing, like I'm crying because I lost somebody or um, my heart is broken or um, this thought, like, why is this happening to me or something? Um, it's like this existence that you have to just have it. None of this has felt like sciatica, by the way. And all of its location has been above, okay? It's been like uh, above the hips area, okay? Above that. And so I'm curious, you know, obviously we've got nose puncture, we got back of the neck, we got like the spine, but it's not going there in that buttocks leg region, okay? It's this right now. Still pulling the rod out. It's vomit worthy pain, okay? You're accepting. You're not trying to hide from it. And I'm very proud of you. I, I don't know. I wish I could find an explanation to what this pain feels like. But there is scar tissue to it, so I do have to pull it, and it does rip a bit. It also feels like bones, like something dragged along bones. It's hard to breathe through it. It feels like it's taking way longer than it should. It's like a very slow train. <laughs> but it's almost out. And it represents a complete moving on from the cracked egg. The yolk that fell on the floor. We can't put it back. It's just a completely moving on. And now that it's out, we're back to the scene where we're looking at this. Obviously, this one from the neck of the dragon was huge. But it's like we're looking at the smaller one that went through the nose. We're just looking at it. And something becomes a, more like a, a darker side of yourself, like uh, your eyes become pitch black. You become a bit um, evil in a way, like, like this one is going to be used as a tool to hurt someone. But what's, what I like about this is you're actually transmuting something that is not yourself. It is of something else. But in order to transmute it, it will feel like it is you. And it will surprise you. That it's just a dark, demonic sort of um, vibrational flicker that just needs to be one with you, you with it. And then it just lets go. And you let go of it. And it doesn't need to exist anymore. Because it's done now. Okay? The wand has no meaning anymore, it just falls to the ground, but you're not really sure who you are. And you actually have a, your head is, you, it's almost like somebody cut, like scalped you, but I don't see exposed brain or anything. I, I just, but it's like, uh, it's almost like was with a razor, some of the top layers of skin were just shaved right off the top. And it looks like a blistering, um, somebody torched it. Not like a sunburn, but somebody actually took fire and torched the top of your flesh of your head. It's just, something looks painful about that. And uh, when I look you in the eyes, and I look at the top of your head, I'm completely, it just, there, I, I'm, there's no words to, to speak. There's only... Almost like I'm, I'm using the brain of my heart to digest information without knowing what it, it is. But uh, you release a b bad egg, a black egg. It is just 
chokes out. You just barf it out and it falls into your hand. And again, I see that sort of dark energy and you squeeze the egg with anger, but then the dark energy leaves and then you see your hand just full of yolk and you start to cry and you say, when will it be over? <sighs> this sciatica thing is, uh, there's a lot to it. What, what its existence and a part of it is a doorway seems to me like it's a door interdimensional doorway to help you reconcile a cross-section of information i'm gonna stick with this for just another minute because i feel like as we we clear what is more um, this has actually been easier and you you've not necessarily been psychologic some on some soul level some subconscious level i don't know but it's not you've not been prepared to quite look at some very dark things that is part of the interdimensional doorway or the gateway that sciatica is providing you and it's pretty hard to look at stuff okay and yes, I took the time to look at your burnt head and it's like I'm giving it acknowledgement of its existence and the pain was real. And I don't know if that happened in some life where your hair burned off or you got your head scalped or what, but um, your hair didn't grow back. That's all I know. It remained a scab scarred uh, space and the hair did not grow there right. It would just, and it looks morbid, okay? And what's, what's interesting is my response to it is when I eyeballed it and digested the information in my heart and I, I accepted it. And I told you, you don't need to change it to make it more appealing to look at. Just let it be the memory and let the memory be visible and let your memories be visible. And if people point at your strange head, because <laughs> in this scene you have like a burnt flesh head, let them point. Your memories are visible. And the visible memories are what makes your physical body more interesting. And you cry about this because you don't want to look more interesting. <laughs> like, I don't want to have this. I don't want this. <laughs> I say want it. Own it. <laughs> it's you. Can we go down to the, the real location of the real pain here? Bam, when I instantly, yes, the answer is yes, because we're already, I'm in a crazy other galaxy. Um, I don't know, it's almost, is it a galaxy or is it just an energy space? Um, looks like stars everywhere in the distance, but whew, it kind of takes your breath away. There's this um, figure eight and it's moving blue and white light in this figure eight, okay? And it, it just, it, it has the essence of galaxy to it, okay? And the figure eight is something I'm supposed to fix. And sometimes you can take the figure eight and fold it together and create like a sphere. And it, it, this is not meant to be fixed in, in a lo any a logical sense. It's almost like the fix does not is not going to be a logical one. The fix um, is going to be like pain. How is pain a fix? Some, every lock has its own key and every circumstance in life is a riddle and we solve the riddle become the answer to the riddle we become it the answer we become the answer okay I have a smiling face here just a female energy and she's like really goofy she's got a 
big bouncy ball as she's like bouncing around on it in the, the outer space. And she has a magical wand and like, ta-da! And then the figure eight, it snaps in the center and opens and becomes like a big blue oval. And then she kind of cuts the oval and pulls it through, almost like it was a ribbon in some sort of slot. She pulls it through and out and she like whacks it like, I don't know, a towel to someone's butt. I don't know, it's just like whoop <laughs> She just does that and she's very silly. And then she takes it and places it in her heart and she bows and says, thank you. And then she bounces off out of the scene, okay? So now we are working with nothing or everything. And I see that there's no pain here. And I see your consciousness is now present here. And your consciousness is like beautiful, I don't know, baby dragon, like uh, the egg that wants to hatch. And the baby dragon is in there. And it, there's just something so beautiful about it. You're not broken. You didn't go splat on the floor. There seems to be echoes of memories of other lifetimes when it didn't work out right things that didn't work out right and then you had to live with what you couldn't fix and that part of the process was the pain and there's no pain in this space because the heart is so full of so much love and generosity and there's so much having been learned and so consciousness is present here and consciousness is your face and your face is sort of this cosmic um, expanded emanation of the heart, of love, of all things. And I feel this energy is a medicine that I'm just placing on your hips and your spine. And I'm placing on your nervous system. It's like a salve. And I'm saying that it is safe to inhale and exhale. It's safe to be at ease. There is no pain that we need to learn from at this time because the learning has already happened and there's a letting go of it. You complete trust. And there's like the beginning of, a, of the hatching of a baby dragon. And that's, <laughs> that's what I'm showing for your session. I will say that I love how it, 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 this like this living energy of communication without any logical basis. And it comes from other forms of communication like emotions, like pain, other forms of communication that don't have any logical basis to them, but they are perhaps the sounds that you're curious about and what it sounds like. And so those sounds are translated into these images and this process. But I will say a lot of your energy field as part of the reflection is to put it all at ease. I don't see the interdimensional gateway right now. I just feel at ease. I just feel at rest or at ease is the grand finale of what I've gone through. So we'll see how it works right we'll see what happens from here this is what i meant to share with you thank you so much for this opportunity and for those watching if any of you would like me to take a look at something and share energy healing and wisdom to help you in your life you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com all right thank you all and have a great day